All right, guys, so we're starting on the headliner today. And if you saw the one of the previous videos, I covered the whole uh, roof of the car here in the uh, Noiko uh, sound deadener with the Noiko red heat insulator. Check that out. Looks really, really good. But uh, I'm going to start taking apart the back trim here and getting it ready for the... Uh, Headliner, let's do it. guys so it looks like all the interior trim is off and this is really helpful to see how the original uh, headliner was installed so it looks like there's just a uh, uh, long strips of uh, uh, tack strips along the side here and that's what the headliner attaches to I'm just really glad that I don't have to take uh, both the front and rear windshields off in order to uh, install the headliner. So this makes it a lot easier to install. Um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna get this uh, tech strip material. I might just have to make my own. Check that out. And it looks like it was just glued here. In some areas there's like a metal strip that it, that, that it holds on to. You can see that right there. So that's really cool. I'm glad, uh, you know, I have this as a template to, uh, to work on. So I think I'm just going to duplicate the, uh, the rear sail panels there and start uh, getting to the uh, headliner. Let's do it. All right, guys, just uh, some quick tips right here. Um, I spent some, quite some time trying to figure out the the whole headliner and how it's all supposed to go. And uh, these rods right here, they were mixed up on this car. Or actually, I mixed them up. <laughs> so it made things quite difficult. I had to keep taking these out and putting them back in. But... Um, for a 64 there's the two on the back are pretty distinctable i know that some of these are color coded but i mean red one of them is red one of them is yellow but you know that doesn't tell me anything uh, and i don't have a manual to, to check what the uh correct uh where they where they go but anyways the if your rods are mixed up uh a good way to check them is just uh have the rods by themselves and just put them up and make sure that they're straight up so that's a good way of checking that they're uh, the correct ones that they go in order but uh i also read online that you want these to be on the second hole of each of these i had i, I tried it on right now and there were some um this one was on the first one and then these were on the first one and this one was on the second one but they have to all be on the second hole that way when you put them on and you pull it, the bows will come forward. So that's that's the idea. <laughs> it's pretty frustrating, but uh, we'll get it finished here. <laughs> so it's looking a lot, a lot better. I know it doesn't seem like it, <laughs> but uh, now that the bows are in the right place, um, when I pull it right here on the front, grab this right here when I pull it it pulls all of the the bows there you see that so it brings all the bows to the it pulls all the bows and it 
and it pulls the fabric with it, if you can see that. So I think I'm on the right track here, but uh, check this out. Uh, I just replaced all of the tack strip. I decided to use the one in the front because it's still pretty good. And some of the side tack strip, I'm gonna be reusing it as well. Check that out. Some of these are old pieces. I think they'll be fine. Um, I've heard of some people using uh, something simple as cardboard. So I'm pretty sure you could use cardboard on here as well. You don't need to have that material. But uh, I just, all I did was cut it into strips. And that's it. I think it's time to put some uh, staples on this and get it started. Let's do it. All right, check that out. So we got the front stapled in. And just a quick tip is you wanna start from the middle and make your way out to the sides. As you can see right here, I have a small wrinkle right here, but if I try to remove this staple and stretch it, it's just gonna move the wrinkle to the side. So you kinda wanna chase that wrinkle out all the way to the side. But um, I checked my trim piece here and it's just gonna completely cover it. So I think it'll be fine. I'm just gonna leave it how it is. It shouldn't be a problem. But this is what we want right here, a little bit of tension on the fabric. And this is the staple gun I'm using. It does an okay job. Some of these staples aren't you know, completely grabbed on there, but as long as it holds it, it should be fine. So let's do the back. And I have a feeling on that corner, I'm gonna have to cut the the channel guide there to release that tension there. So let's keep going. All right, we started on the back, check that out. Started from the middle and making my way to the side. It's coming out really nice so far. Make sure you have the, the two wires that go, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two wires, one here and one all the way over here that holds on to the last bow. That way it doesn't, uh, you know, flip down on you. So that's really important. Um, but you can see it's coming out really nice. We have some wrinkles just right here, but that's okay. Because once I get the sides out, sides down, the wrinkles will disappear. So I'm gonna get started on the other side and then we'll get the sides down. Let's do it. All right, the back is all stapled in and it's coming out really, really nice. No wrinkles on that back panel, which is what we want. Uh, you're gonna have some wrinkles right here, which is fine. Once you pull the sides and the corners, it'll all go away. But uh, a very quick tip is once when you're putting the staples there, you want to make sure that the tension is all the same across all the staples. For example, if you put one staple here and then you put another one here, you don't wanna pull it tighter than the one before. Uh, you want to make sure and try to match the tension across all the staples or else you'll get some wrinkles there. But uh, I have some wrinkles here in the middle. Check that out. Uh, but that's perfectly fine. Once I put the sides down, it's going to get rid of them. Check that out. You see that? So I'm not worried about that. Um, but I'm going to start on the middle here again. Start in the middle and then make my way to the corner and then start from the middle here, make my way to the other corner. Let's get it done. So we've got the sides stapled in. So it's coming out pretty good, I think. Uh, there is some wrinkles on there. Sometimes it's hard to see the wrinkles. If you use your phone and record a video, you can see it very clearly. But uh, I'm gonna do the other side and then hopefully that will get rid of the wrinkles on the other side. Check that out. If I pull this, see, it still doesn't get all the wrinkles out, but it gets a lot of them out, if you could see that right there. So I'm just gonna do this side first, and then I might have to take off the staples right where the channel is at, and just pull it a little bit tighter. But it's coming out really, really good. Check out that back corner, it's pretty much perfect. Let's keep going. All right, you guys, check that out. So I started stapling the other side. Check that out. 
and the wrinkles are gone just like that it's coming out so good just gotta keep going the corners are the hardest in this car because they start to get really flat right on the corners so that's the hardest part about this but uh just gotta have to do the back corner well i guess any corner is hard look at this so i have to get rid of all these wrinkles right here and stretch this out a bit you see that so just taking your time with this and making sure that you're you know focused and paying attention the way the tension is going so that these wrinkles won't just appear in the middle of your your whole job here so let me just keep going all right check that out finally done it came out really really nice i'm not a professional by any means this is the first time i've done a headliner installation but uh i think i did all right came out really really good i'm just going to trim the sides here cut it a little bit shorter and then just uh glue it onto the channel right here see that and that'll complete the uh, headliner installation super nice and i'm also going to do the uh rear cell panels there the headliner that i bought it also came with the material for the rear cell panels so i'm going to do it of the same material that i did the uh channel strips and show you guys real quick how it's done let's finish this check these out these are the original quarter cell panels from the car they're pretty warped and this one's got a huge crack in it so i'm unable to use these and i try to make my own but yeah you know it's just it's never gonna come out 100 uh, percent i don't have the template or else i'd you know do it myself but I just really wanted to be, you know, fit right. And so I found a company that actually remakes these. Check this out. This, that's the part number and they're made by Repops. And they have the cutouts for the rear dome lights as well. And these are 100% uh, exact to the fit. So let's get these covered and let's finish this. So. It's supposed to be pretty straightforward, just gluing the fabric onto the board there. And I'm using this type of glue. Check that out. But the first problem that we're coming up with is that it's uh, it has wrinkles in it. You see that? And I try to stretch it out, but it looks like it's just from the glue. So... You can see it, you could really see it right there, all those wrinkles there. So I think what I have to do is get some type of uh, glue that doesn't um, harden like this, you know? Maybe some type of paste or something that is more of a liquid than a spray glue. So don't use this stuff for the rear sail panels. Uh, I'm gonna go see what else I can find at the store and I'll come back. <laughs> All right, so we're back. And this time I ended up getting some actual contact cement. And I read on the internet that some people have used contact cement with good results with the cell panel. So we're gonna try that out and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't ruin it, <laughs> but we'll see. Let's do it. And check that out. It came out really nice. Got some little bit of wrinkles right there, but that's okay. That's where the the rear dome light is gonna go, so no problem there. And yeah, I didn't really stretch this out. You just uh, apply the contact cement right on the fabric on the back. Um, you could also do an outline if you want to. You can you know get a marker and outline it, and then just glue that area here, and then just push it down and with your hands kind of squeeze out the bubbles and the wrinkles and that's it came out really nice so i'm gonna cut the rear dome light and then just glue the ends here and then just install it in the car that should be it
holy cow you guys check that out it's looking really really good once i put the trim back on here and then the back window trim it's going to really tighten up this panel here and there's also a wide tack strip that goes behind this we're just going to put a little bit of glue on there so that it can secure it even more against the headliner here and it's going to come out perfect but uh, I'm not going to put the trim back on just yet because I have the whole dash out. So keep a lookout for that video. But uh, not too bad. I mean, for my first headliner, it's come out really good. And if I could do it, you guys could do it too. You just got to have the patience and take your time with it. And pay attention to the details and yours will come out just as good as mine. Check that out. But uh, I'm going to end the video here, guys. If you guys like the content, you guys like the videos, please subscribe and follow the Galaxy build. And remember, give the pedal to the metal. Boom.